4, 195.6 kilometers from Tarascon to Sisteron, and this was the stage that they were all talking about before this race began. The stage that took them partway over the mighty Mont Ventoux, frequently, of course, an epic scene in the Tour de France. Unfortunately, at this time of the year, it's often impossible to go right over the top here in the middle of March, but nevertheless, halfway up is still quite a climb. There's also two further climbs, counting towards the King of the Mountains competition later on. The weather, fortunately for these big climbs, set reasonably fair. And the way goes the, the Tarascon mascot on his tricycle in the middle of the bunch of riders, but he didn't last very long. This man, though, did. This is the Francais de Jeux rider, Nicolas Vogondi. Only 23 years of age, turned pro in 1997. He's had a couple of minor professional wins. And as he reached the Mont Ventoux, after the thick end of 90 kilometers of this 195K stage, he was well clear and looking good. Confirmation of the order as they went over the part of the Ventoux that this race was scheduled to climb. Bogondi in a clear lead over Lori Aus going over the top there in the uh, championship jersey of Estonia and Marcelino Garcia in the orange colours of the Spanish outfit Uskatel. On the descent now, very, very fast indeed, 50 to 60 miles an hour on some parts. And these two riders now together, Aus and Garcia, chasing the lone leader, Bogondi. A further five minutes behind them, and we get a great aerial shot of the main bunch of riders going round one of the many hairpin bends on this tortuous descent. The chase still on, lower down the slope. Bagondi still out in the lead, as more riders come out of the peloton now to try and close down this gap on the way to the finish in Sisteron. This one of the AG2R team, the French outfit, of which Agnel Luto is a member. But here we go back to Vogondi, who's still looking good, this youngster, although he's been out in the lead now for a long, long way. A nice, compact little attacking group now established itself clear of the main peloton and soon reeling in here the original two chasers, Ars and Garcia. Still, though, out in front, one more man, the Frenchman, Vogondi. Some team tactics being discussed there back in the Mercury camp, but now here's Agnoluto. We saw a brief glimpse of him on the previous stage. He's decided to try and have a go and pull back Vagondi. Well, he looks as though he's paying for his efforts a little here. The strain showing on his face. He's been out for a long, long way. Here's another new face, Konechny of the Domo team. This exciting Czech rider has already won a number of good races in the last couple of years and is looking full of fight. But have the Mercury boys still got control of this particular stage? Bogondi still battling on. Can he really hope to stay clear and take the stage from Tarascon to Sisteron? Once again, we see the Mercury boys trying to keep the pace high at the front of Pel the peloton, trying to limit their losses, and there you have an idea of the gap. Konechny at 1 minute 10, and the main peloton at 1 minute 37. The gap's coming down. Now, this is actually the finish line, but here at Sisteron, the organisers have decided to make the race, this particular stage anyway, go one more time around a loop of around about 16 or 17 kilometers back out of the town again up over one more climb and then back in to the finish line to receive the checkered flag well konechny is caught on the climb and vagodny not far in front of them either and now the attacks are coming thick and fast on this final climb on the back end of this little circuit out and back into the stage finish so for Godney's effort has all come to nothing. We've got Laurent Brochard now, the former World Road Race champion, in the picture after having a crash earlier. He was paced back to the peloton by his teammates, and this is Brochard now on the attack, 
with Rodriguez. Brochard finished runner-up in this race just 12 months ago. He held the white leader's jersey for, the, for, for four days after a good ride in the prologue time trial and the first road stage. And Brochard really looking full of fight at that stage, but that has also come to nothing. And uh, Rodriguez and Brochard back in the pack once again. Now then, a fresh attack, this time by the former runner-up in the Tour de France, Alex Zuller, the Swiss uh, rider, and the Portuguese, Jose Acevedo. Only about five or six kilometres to go, and they've gone. They've suddenly really, really gone and opened up a big gap. Zuller in new colours this year for Team Coast, and his former team, uh, Anse, being represented in the break by Acevedo. Now then, Zula and Azevedo might well have just timed it right here. The Uscatel boys and the Mercury boys trying to close the gap, but it's not going to work. Azevedo leading the sprint out, but Zula coming round him. Zula taking a surprise sprint finish ahead of Azevedo. As behind them, the pack swarms after them, with Tristan Hoffman just beating Van Pettigem to the line for third place. Well, I can't remember the last time that Alex Zula won a sprint finish against anybody. His many wins have usually come in low break. He's 32 years of age, he's had an up-and-down career, but this looks like a rejuvenated Alex Zuller. The Swiss looking full of fight in the finish there, but overall it didn't make any difference. The leader after this latest stage, stage four, still Peter Van Pettigem. There's a check, no change at all in the top ten. Van Pettigem still with that 11-second advantage over Yaksha, 15 seconds over Rumsas and 16 on Regal.